Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper left-hand corner, you have Masuchi starting as the gray Zerg. Bottom right-hand corner, we have Rancor starting as the pink Zerg. This is on Fighting Spirit, part of Fighting Spirit Mania. This is going to be game three of set six. Thus far, each player taking down a single match. Once again, going to be playing in the dark. And... An interesting reversal of the previous match. This time Rancor in the bottom right and corner, Masuchi in the upper left. Now, previous match, we saw Masuchi... I don't, I gotta say, like... I'm try, as I'm learning more about these guys and their ZVZ, I feel like Rancor does a better job of adjusting based on Overlord scouting patterns. And it seems like he does a fantastic job of adjusting his build orders and finding... At least, it's, we've seen his play progress in the midst of these sets. However... Misuchi seems to have that twelve, that entire tree of 12 cool build orders really well figured out. And against Rancor's standard 9 pool, that seems to be have been giving him an advantage throughout this series. Additionally, it feels like Misuchi in the dark has made a lot of really good decisions that have won him games. So I feel like one of the other things... How do I put this? I really like things like StarCraft where they are complex enough where you kind of get a glimpse into people's personalities because of the complexity. Which is actually funny because it's like, I almost want to see AIs capped at a, like to see if there would be just different build styles that develop. And I'm wondering if in the future, it looks like we're seeing in base 12th hatch, if that will be an indicator of like an excellent game in the future whether you see like certain like if you have two ai that are just using machine learning to try to play against one another one another and discover build orders and stuff if you end up with two ai at the end of the day that play drastically differently i think that might be indicative of a really good complex game and i love Bro brood war in particular because i feel like it does that and you can kind of see to a degree the personality there are other things that do that as well um, but yeah i think that I, I love things that are like that and Brood War is one of them. It's like learn about... It's like... And I get to learn about myself as a commentator. And you guys get to learn about yourself as an audience. It's wonderful. Anyway. 12 drones for Rancor. Going to drop that creep colony again. Before the spawning pool is even finished. Just preventatively. Just in case there was early... Zergling pressure. I think... I should have been paying more attention. But I believe this was... Another 12 pool. And Rancor making an adjustment on the previous build order. So he's doing the in-base hatch build order again from the dark upon not seeing the overlords uh, in position. But he's gone for the in-base hatchery, and he's also put it to the south. So the Zerglings potentially, as they see the Sunken Colony and back out, might not realize that this is in fact a 12-hatch build. Zergling speed is being upgraded. A big indicator is going to be the no drones on gas here. And that Rancor is potentially... And that's also going to make it hard for the Overlords to scout it. So Masuchi just not finding this base. Looking to potentially get in there. The Zergling... Actually, he could just let this come across. But Oh, no. He sees the lack... I think he saw the lack of drones. Lair about halfway finished. And that should trigger some Sunken Colonies. Because as long as, as long as Masuchi defends this against the Zergling Flood, he will win. But did he realize there were no drones in gas? I'm not sure if he did or not. I don't see... There are the Zerglings here on the ground, but I don't see any additional Zerglings being produced. Okay, finally some additional Zerglings being produced. Rancor opting to go ahead and grab his natural expansion. Masuchi up two larvae. So this is going to be three hatch. And is this just a fake out? Dropping that hatchery and canceling? Because this is going to be... Or is Rancor going to move to the evolution pool style? This is going to be hard to defend. So he dropped this hatchery get rid of that for you. He dropped his hatchery to be a little bit more hidden, but if he had to opt for the evolution-style defense, this is a lot of territory to cover, and he would need an additional evolution chamber. So maybe just going to go for three base Zergling and try to punch through. Just having more larva before, and maybe try to catch right on that Mutalisk timing and punish Masuchi that way. Masuchi moving forward, getting aggressive. That's the other problem for Rancor, is, is if Masuchi can sneak some Zerglings past. Might end up in an advantage right there. 
So a lot of those Zerglings getting wiped out. Third Hatchery's coming online, and it should be nothing but Zerglings from here on out. Yeah, because no Evolution Chamber. Now running forward, there are a lot of Zerglings. This is cross-map spawn. So it's a lot of territory to cover. The Spire is going to finish in not too long. A huge amount of Zerglings being produced. But keep in mind, Rancor has three hatcheries. He is going to go for an Evolution Chamber behind this. Missed a sizable engagement here in the background. Rancor not able to split through. But Mutalisks are now being produced. So there's one creep colony. He's going to need two at each location. He does have more larvae to work with, but Masushi already has its natural expansion. And I think what this is... But Rancor, I think realizing the Zergling Flood wasn't going to get it cut, droned up heavily in the midst of this in preparation. So he's going to lose the Overlord, which is 100 minerals lost. But he's got spore colonies that are dropping everywhere. And you can just see, yeah, this doesn't feel like his comfortable play style. Because it just looks like the coverage of the spore colonies is a little bit more... Staggered. A little bit less well positioned. He's going to grab a third one here. But Rancor, if he can just defend, will end up in an excellent position. Masuchi currently getting air control. He has a lot of... So after that Zergling flood and the counter Zerglings being built, that's a lot of Zerglings now on the ground. The one critical problem for Rancor is being able to have sufficient defense to defend that natural expansion against Masuchi's superior link count. An additional something colony going down. Wow. So this is going to be a very heavy shell game now for Rancor. He's gone up to 22 drones. It looks like another Overlord is going to get picked off in that upper end corner. That's going to put him very much in the red. He hasn't even started Lair yet. Hydralisk! He's going to go Hydralisk. So dropping the Hydra Den. I've seen this work out for Urbmon a few times. But this is a uh, n non... This is a very stereo... Untypical build order. And upon not seeing either go to Lair, I think he has to assume that it is a Hydralisk Den. The problem with Hydralisks is... Uh, movement. It's very difficult especially along this rampside edge to get them out there and they're just not mobile comparatively. And Masuchi's moving in with a huge army. So the Mutalisks can be defended but the Zerglings are going to be exposed and he needs to preserve those Zerglings to defend against the Zerglings on the ground. And another Overlord looks like it's going to get picked off overhead. This is so that full control group of Zerglings running in. They're just going to run right into the main. Some Zerglings getting pinned at the ramp. The Mutalisks are re-engaging right there. A drone getting picked off in the midst in the midst of that. This is going to force some additional Zerglings. One Mutalisk did get picked off in the air. But the Mutalisks and the Zerglings controlling a lot of Rancor's base. So on top of that, it's a range being built. So on top of that, it's going to be a split location. These Zerglings are going to find that tech. They might even be able to work on that Hydralisk then. Able to pick off a drone right there. Oh, this is not good for Rancor. He's trying to drop an emergency creep colony, but I don't think it's going to be sufficient to spare that Hydralisk Den. So the Hydralisk Den goes down, and now this is like, I don't even know what to call this. Rancor up a, an immense amount of drones, but for how long? Another drone's getting picked off. Mistucci, yeah, all, and as I was speaking, able to flip that. This Hydralisk Den is not defended against the Mutalisk. The Zerglings were picked off. Some Hydralisks now finally in the air, but I don't know that it's sufficient. A fourth hatchery being dropped. But Rancor has fallen behind in the overall drone count in the midst of all of this. And yeah, the Mutalist picking away at that Hydralist then. The Hydralist crawling forward to try to defend it. Another drone getting picked off. Hydralists are fairly cheap, but they do not trade particularly well. And this is like eight Mutalists, so Rancor might lose a second Hydralist then. Needs to cancel, maybe potentially needs to cancel this, trying to bounce in and out to buy himself some time. No reinforcements coming from the natural expansion. And the Hydralist Den being picked off once again. Third Hydralist Den down in more defensive position, but the drones also getting picked off. This is not looking good for Rancor. So it looks like Ran... Yeah. 
out of the defensive evolution chamber style builds, yeah, Masuchi just defends it much, much better. Mutal is sufficient numbers pressing forward, trying to bully and target fire, but still getting picked off a little bit at a time. Once, Yeah, once you have a sufficient amount of Mutalisks, they can just dodge in and out and target fire. It works very, very well for them. So four hatcheries up. Rancor behind in the overall drone count. 12 o'clock base being grabbed. Masuchi doing everything right, in my opinion, to really cap this out. For the Hydralisk build to work, you just need overwhelming economy and overwhelming numbers to be able to kind of punch through, and I don't think that's going to happen for Rancor here. He's now getting Hydralisk speed. He's equalizing the drone count a little bit, but I don't think he's going to be able to apply pressure. So he's going to see this 12 o'clock base being built, but I don't think he can apply pressure and deal with the Mutalisks and press forward. This almost makes it feel like a TVZ at times. And also, Masuchi is way ahead in the overall just raw army count. And you can see these Mutalisks are just holding this army back. Level 1 weapons has been upgraded, though. Level 1 weapons is upgraded for the Mutalisks as well. More Hydralisks. Yeah, and just in even... Yeah, this is not looking good. The Evolution Chamber now getting pecked away at. The Hydralisks trying to regather... Zergling just kind of watching this build. And I think this is a desperation maneuver from Rancor now. He's moving out with these Hydralisks, knowing he's got to get something done. He's going to lose that Evolution Chamber. He needs to. I don't think he canceled that, so loses those minerals. Some additional Hydralisks just getting splatted as they're trying to come across. At the very least, what this might do is this attack might force the Mutalisks back to the base. But more Mutalisks spawning, and so that's going to be two control groups to potentially work with. Let's see if they can regather. So they're not concentrated just yet. The Mutal is making their way back across. Sub room for Rancor. So with that counterattack, he's able to take out a base. But he's still pound for pound. Yeah, and also a great engagement point for Masuchi here. So that Hydralisk force is going to get rocked. And I wouldn't be shocked to see GG right there. Rancor still holding on. Still at four, uh, four hatcheries, now making his way to Lair. But behind, in the overall drone count, yeah, going to call GG right there. Just insurmountable. So that game goes to Masuchi. We will go to... Just feels like tick for tack, back and forth. Definitely a hole in Rancor's play that Masuchi is able to exploit. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.